You're listening to the Atlanta Dream Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can give at www.dreamcenterchurch.com, where every dollar helps advance the kingdom of God. We hope that this message edifies and encourages you to do the great things God has called you to do. Uh, Hey, look, we're going to talk about the day after. This is the sermon title. We're talking about the day after. Uh, This is appropriate for today. Uh, It wasn't really planned necessarily for this, but it's going to work out great. We're going to be talking about Mary. Mary and Christmas. How many guys know the Christmas story pretty good? Everyone in here know the Christmas story pretty good? Yeah? Okay. Those are the laziest yeses in the world. Come on, move your neck a little bit or something. There you go. Come on. It it is a crazy story. She went through a crazy time. I'm going to talk about this for a second, and I'm going to relate to you. But we're going to talk about how Mary didn't just have the most incredible time of her life having that baby born, but Mary endured the responsibility afterwards. And I'm going to say this because I do this all the time, and we, we know this. this it's almost like, a, it's almost like a, a, a wise saying, don't make a resolution on New Year's because you're not going to keep it. That's almost what we all want to say, right? But the reality of it is it's true. It's become cliche to say that a New Year's resolution, you're not going to end up keeping it. Because so many of us, we start something so excited. Look, every year, I, I, and I'm not joking, I download the same stupid app. I just deleted it four days ago. It's called Streaks. You guys ever seen this app before? And all it does is it calculates. You, just, you, you say, oh, I want to work out today. And you say, I want to work out five days a week. And every week you go in, every day you work out, you hit the streak button, and you can see how many days in a row you did it. And every year I download that app and I think, okay, I'm going to work out, man. I'm going to work out every single day, seven days a week, even if it's for 10 minutes. That's what I tell myself. And I get that app and I'm excited about it. And I start working out. I start seeing some results. No one else can see the results, but I can see the results. You guys know what I'm talking about? As I'm walking around the house with my shirt off a little bit more in front of Susie. You know, I'm like, hey, what's up, Susie? Yeah. And I'm so excited while I'm working out. But then get to week number three. It's almost every time, week number three. Week number two, I can make it through pretty easily. But week number three, I lose all my endurance. I stay up too late one night, right? And then I wake up, and at 6 a.m., my alarm goes off. And this is what I think. Oh, if I don't get enough sleep, then I probably won't be able to work out the next day. I need to go. I need to rest a little bit longer. And then I'll wake up. I'll wake up an hour later, and what do I do? I, I wake up and say, well, I'll get to working out at the end of the day. And at the end of the day comes, I'm thinking, well, I got to hang out with my kids, so I better get home and hang out with my kids. And I'll say, I'll work out tonight. And the nighttime comes, I think, well, I haven't seen Susie in a few, so I should hang out with Susie. And then finally, when Susie goes to bed, I think, well, Instagram sounds more interesting right now, and that's what I do. And then before I know it, I miss one day, and the next morning I wake up and go, that wasn't so bad. It was just one day. I'll make it up today. I'll work out a double. Of course, I might, or maybe I won't, but by the end of the week, I find myself out of my routine. And what started out as exciting ended up being a burden to me. And I see that happen in a lot of our lives, even with Christianity. Like even with church. How many of you guys remember when you first got saved? Anyone in here remember when you first got saved? And you couldn't miss church? You remember that? You get so excited. I can't miss church, man. This is the most important day of my life. My I'm, Mom, I'm using you twice. I'm quoting you twice today. My mom said when she first got saved, she would go to church on Sunday so she could make it to Wednesday. And when she would go to church on Wednesday so she could make it back to Sunday. You guys know what I'm talking about? She needed that church. And then she would be around the community, the family, and it was everything. Everything, Right? And it was, I, I think for most of us, when we rededicate our life, when we get to the Lord, we're so excited. We start reading our Bibles like crazy. You guys know what I'm talking about? Can I tell you another f- a failure of mine? Can I share my failures with you guys? You guys are like my therapist. Thank you. I, uh, I decided I was going to read 10 chapters a day in the Bible. Have you guys ever tried to do that? <laughs> oh, chill, chill. Chill out, okay? I had it for about six weeks, 10 chapters a day. And then, and then there was a few days I skipped a day, right? I, I got busy or whatever. I didn't prioritize. In fact, it was one day I skipped four days. So I had 50 total chapters to read. I went upstairs in my office, and I read every one of those chapters. I just went through. I thought, I'm going to do this thing. But as time went on and my excitement came dull, I lost interest. And then can I tell you? Can I just tell you guys what happened? I found myself not even reading the Bible daily. I found myself almost going to reverse same thing happened with working out, by the way. Once I stopped working out, guess what I do? I stop counting my calories. I start eating like crazy. I eat everything I can in the closet. In the closet. I'm in the closet eating food. <laughs> I'm a closet eater. There's so many jokes, but I'm not going to say any of them. So I'm going to leave that right there. And I want to say this to you because I'm looking to Mary today to talk about how do you endure. Endure? Endure? Endure. There's so many different ways to say it, isn't it? Yeah. 
Endor. Like Endor, like a Star Wars. Yeah, oh, thank you. Uh, how do you endure through the mundane? How do you do that? Because I think everybody in here, we get super pumped about certain things. We go for it. But over time, you can look in your own life. You have these trajectories where you're going to go really far, but then you just kind of let it go. And it's not important anymore. And you let it go. And some of us, we've even done that with the things God has given us, that he's blessed us, that he gave us crazy revelation. He showed us dreams. He's spoken to us. And we got it. We're so excited. But because just the mundane work, all of a sudden, those dreams became lost. And we're not even walking in what God had purposed us for. And today, I want to show you some things that Mary did in the beginning. And I want to put this out there, too, because this is important to understand, is that in the between times of starting something and finishing something, it is the most loneliest of all times. And this is what I mean by this. I, I, I'm going to use this as an example, okay? When someone gets into college, everyone celebrates them. Everyone says it's so exciting. I remember my nephew, Caden, he was going into UGA. That's a pretty nice school, University of Georgia, Bulldogs. I'm thinking, this is a pretty big deal. Right at his graduation, we were celebrating them. Man, you're going to UGA. This is so cool. Everyone's celebrating them. And then he goes to school, and can I tell you, not one time did I call him and tell, ask, how's UGA going? Not one time was any of us there talking to him about his studies. And the truth is, we probably won't celebrate that he's in UGA until he graduates UGA. And you can apply that to most things in your life. People will be around for the beginning, and people will be there for the finish, but most people aren't there in, the, in between times. And that in-between time is crucial, because that is the journey to that great finish. And so when I think about you guys, I think about my own life, and I think about the day after, and when I say the day after, I'm talking about the day after Mary's biggest day in life. She had Jesus Christ. Could you imagine having that on your resume? Uh, I did this, I did this, I brought Jesus Christ into this earth. <laughs> the next few days were pretty lonesome. In fact, we only have three stories we only have two stories about Jesus' life and Mary's life from when he was born to when his ministry starts at about age 30, 30 years of alone time. And in those 30 years, I, Doug, Doug, go outside with your, what is this? Who is this man? <laughs> 30 years, 30 years, there's this hidden time of Jesus, but I want to talk about his mom, his mother raising this man. And this is what I want to talk to you guys about. There's these two stories. The first story is that about two years in, a bunch of Magi, people from the east, these wise men, some of them were kings, showed up and gave him presents, gold, yeah, frankincense, and myrrh. Will someone help him? Yeah, will you help him really quick? Yeah. <laughs> Take your phone call somewhere else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do love you for that. There's these two times. The first time was Mary, after two years or so of raising her child, Jesus Christ, two years of no one really being around her, finally something happened cool. A bunch of people brought a bunch of presents. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. About 100 people showed up. They made a ruckus, by the way. It was a big deal. And then after that, though, something tragic happened. Every two-year-old and under in that nation got slaughtered after that. But that was a big moment for Mary. And then after that, there's only one more moment, and this wasn't a big moment. In fact, it was a terrifying moment with Mary. They went up, as they did traditionally, up to the temple, and they left in their big caravan. Probably a couple hundred people went from their town up to Jerusalem to do some sacrifices and some tradition, religious traditions and law. And when they're leaving, they realize a few days into the journey, wait a minute, we lost our son, Jesus. Could you imagine the pressure you might feel? You're raising the king of kings, the Lord of lords, and you'll lose him. And this is, he's at 12 years old, so now all of a sudden we're about 10 years ahead. A whole decade has gone by, and we got zero stories of what Mary and Jesus are doing. And the next story we find is Mary under pressure. We lost the king of kings. We got to go find him. Well, they end up finding him. He's in the temple preaching. Out. Could you imagine your 12-year-old kid preaching? How, how many of you guys would be proud? Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. And then they grab him and say, what are you doing? He says, I've been about my father's business. And then they go back home. But everything else... It's hidden. And I'm looking around this room, and a lot of you guys have callings in your life. 
And right now, you might be in the middle of it, but you're hidden, and no one knows what's going on. You've been going through trials. You've been going through tribulations. Some of you guys got huge callings in your life. Some of you guys got crazy things God has in store for you. And you got the vision, you got the dream, and now you're in this hidden place and no one even knows what's going on in your life. And when they do see you, they catch you in the wrong times. How many of you guys have ever had this, where every time someone catches you, you're mad at something? Anyone ever had that before? And it's the worst time for them to see you. And so I want to tell you what Mary did, though, and what you need to do to keep your endurance during this walk. You guys ready for this? I'm going to bust through this. Wait, wait. Oh, yeah. We're going to go into Luke chapter 1, verse 28 and 29. We're going to go into the beforehand, the beginning. Before Mary started her journey, this is what happened. Luke 1, 28. Mary's out hanging out, and this angel shows up to her. and says, having come in, the angel said to Mary, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw the angel, she was troubled. Everyone say troubled at his saying. Now, does it say that she was excited? Did anyone see the word excited up there? Do you guys know what troubled means? It means that she was disturbed. How many of you guys have ever heard God tell you to do something and you got disturbed by it? Anyone in here? Yeah, me, me too, bro. A bunch of times I've been disturbed. Going, God, I don't want to do that. Mom, can I use you one more time? This is the worst one, moms out there. This is crazy. Some of you guys are going to be rejoicing. That God hasn't said this to you. Or if he has, you're rejoicing because you ignored him. <laughs> My mom was called by the Lord to trust him with her womb. I have 11 kids. I'm a man. I don't even understand, okay, what that really feels like. All right? I don't want to imagine that. Now, Mom, I'm not saying this was true about you, but I'm going to tell you right now, I think everyone in here, if you heard that, you'd be troubled. How many of you guys would be troubled if you heard that? Yeah, she was troubled. And she considered what manner of greeting this was. An angel shows up and doesn't say, hey, I'm going to rebuke you. An angel shows up and says, oh, you're highly favored. It says she was troubled. She was nervous. She wasn't prepared. What kind of greeting was this? I'm going to skip ahead a few verses because this is what she does. The angel tells her what's going to happen. You're going to end up having a baby in verse 39. It says, Mary arose in those days and she went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth, her cousin. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary. Mary's running in. Hey, Lizzie. Hey, Lizzie. It says, Elizabeth heard the greeting and the babe inside of her, which was John the Baptist, leaped. In the womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women. This is Elizabeth talking to Mary. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe inside of my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And then this is what happens to Mary. Mary starts singing a song. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God. My Everyone say rejoiced. Rejoiced and troubled are two different words. Trouble means I'm concerned. Rejoice means I'm going to celebrate. I'm excited. Now I want to tell you the first thing that Mary did that helped her later on in her endurance about her calling with the Lord. The Lord gets a greeting to her. The angel does. Says, this is the calling of you. I'm putting the king of kings inside your womb. You are a virgin, by the way. So good job or good luck explaining this one to everybody. This is yours. And she's troubled. You know what she does? She goes to her cousin's house, who's six months pregnant already. She's an older woman. It's a miracle that she's even pregnant. And she runs down there, and she gets filled with the Holy Spirit while she's there. And all of a sudden, troubled Mary sings a song while she's rejoicing. I want to say this to everyone in this room. If you want to have endurance, you need to be someone who surrounds yourself with people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen, too many of us are in this place. We're going, man, I got great things that God has for me, but we're surrounded with people who don't even worship the Lord anymore. And what do we do? We talk to them about it. We share it with them. And they, don't, they might even be supportive. Oh, you do you. It's your truth. Your buddy. Go, go, go. But they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. They don't give you a place of rejoicing. They don't speak the words of God into your life. You know what happened with Mary? When Mary heard the news, she was troubled. But when she got surrounded by people like in this room, she caught in with the people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, they start speaking the things of God. All of a sudden, her troubles turn into rejoicing. And I want to say this about some of you guys' callings. I want to say this about some of you guys. Just I, Can I just put this in the real practical for a second? If you want to be someone who works out all the time, you know who you should surround yourself with? 
people who work out all the time. You shouldn't surround yourself with the lazy people because what's going to happen? Oh, don't go to the gym. Watch this TV show with me instead. <laughs> don't, don't go work out. Look at these potato chips. They're delicious. Potato chips are my weakness, by the way. Anyone in here with me? Come on, we'll celebrate. You guys, let's gather together. Me and you guys, we'll gather together. We'll potato chip it up. Yeah, 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 man. The first thing, if you want to have endurance, you need to surround yourself with people who are filled with the Spirit in everything that you do. And this is what I want to say to you, too. You don't need to surround yourself with people who are like-minded in your calling. That's where we get messed up. God's called me to be a missionary, so I'm going to go hang out with the missionaries. We see this in the church. I'm going to speak to you guys because a lot of you guys have been in church for a long time, but I've noticed a trend. The prophets make their own churches, and all the prophets go to those churches. They're the weird churches. You guys call them the weird churches. They're the ones who prophesy all the time. You know, they play music for the whole service for four or five hours. You guys know what I'm talking about? And then we got the teachers. The teachers, they all gather together. Maybe you might want to call them Methodists or Baptists, but they're the most educated and know the word of God better than anyone else I know. And they gather together. But that's not what I'm trying to point out to you. You don't need to get with people who have the same calling as you. You just need to get people who have the same spirit of the Lord inside of them. They could be people who are in business. They could be people who are in ministry. They could be people who seriously are called like uh, Ezekiel, which, by the way, I don't think any of us know these kind of people, who are called laying on their side so they could proclaim the word of the Lord to the cities. It doesn't matter what they're doing. As long as they're filled with the Holy Spirit, then you'll be able to have endurance when no one else is around. How many of you guys have seen that to be true in your life? I talk about my mom. When she got saved, she said that church was everything. Well, you know what she was doing? She was excited when she first got saved. She was ready to give up everything, but to endure, she had to be surrounded by people who were filled with the Spirit. Surround yourself with people who are filled with the Spirit. And even in that in-between time when no one's celebrating your calling, you'll have endurance to make it through. Number two, though, I want to point out, Mary had to pay a price. If you want to have endurance, don't try to avoid the cost of your calling but pay the price. How many of you guys have ever had something expensive before? Anyone in here? Well, that's okay. I want to share a real quick story about something expensive I have, personally, right now. This iPhone right here is the iPhone 10. When this thing first came out, y'all, I was like pumped to get it. There's no button on it. You guys know what I'm talking about? My iPhone people at, there's no button on it. Face ID. This thing knew my face. The government and my phone know my face. I was so excited. I got this phone, and can I tell you, when I first bought my first iPhone, it was an iPhone 4. You guys remember those things? iPhone 4, man. It was tight. It was like this big. I love that iPhone. It was only like six, seven years ago. It's not that old. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I had the iPhone 4. And when I first got it, I went to the store and I spent $30 on a case, an OtterBox. You guys remember OtterBoxes? Yeah. And this was a full case. You would well, actually, let me step back for a second because my wife's looking at me. At first, I didn't buy the case and I broke the phone. <laughs> and I went and got it repaired. And then my wife said, you go get a case for that thing. So I bought a case. And I went and got a case. It wasn't nearly as nice as my wife's case because my wife got the case that had the plastic screen over it, you know. It had everything, right? You could seriously run a tank over it and it wouldn't break. That's the kind of case she had. But because it was valuable, what I did is since we had to pay a price for it, I put a case around it to protect it. I wanted it to protect it. And then every time I was in the car, I have a habit of sitting on my phone. I'll I'll put it underneath my leg when I'm driving my car. And every time I'd get out of the car, I would stop and think, wait a minute, where's my phone? And I'd reach under my leg and I'd pick it up. I was always considerate of it because I paid a price for it. But I want to go to something that I didn't pay a price for that was a little bit more expensive, not more expensive. But I was given a really awesome truck. It's right outside. It's massive. You guys know how much I love my truck. Now, Doug Parsons right here made a trade with me randomly. I didn't even know him. He made a trade with me. That's why he could get up and talk on the phone. And if you're in church and you want to talk on the phone in church, you got to trade me cars. That's how it works, okay? And so Doug Parsons traded this truck for me, and I didn't pay a dime for it. In fact, I got the better end of the stick. He traded for an old, what was it, Toyota Corolla or something like that, some junky car, small car. He was doing it for an elderly man who didn't have a car, and he was driving his tractor to go get his medicine. So he, the truck was too big, so he traded me with the car. I took that truck home. I'm honking the horn. Can I tell you how I treat that car because I didn't pay a price for it? You better believe every curb in this city has my tire marks on it. Every single curb. I run over curbs like they're, like they're speed bumps. I love them. I just hit every curb I can. In fact, it's so dangerous that when I'm driving my wife's van, I have to be careful that I don't hit curbs because I'm so used to it now. If you go out and look at my truck right now, you're going to see my bumper is rusted and bent out. Now, I didn't do that personally. I want you guys to know that, all right? I don't think, I, have I wrecked this truck? Oh, yeah, I did. I ran into Eli and Evelyn. I backed into him one time. Sorry, guys. 
But I, my truck has been damaged so many times. My front end is all screwed up. My back bumper is all screwed up. And every time that happened, you know what I did? I took the money from the insurance and put it in my pocket, and I just hammered those things back out. I just did whatever I could to hammer them out. Because the value didn't have any cost to me. And so I treated it different. My phone, I would protect with a case. My phone's not even close to the value of that truck. But because I paid a price for it, I held on dearly to it. Well, Mary had to pay a price for her calling. I'm going to just go up to Matthew, if I can. Matthew chapter 1. I got two verses for you. It says this. Now, the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Hang on right there for a second. This was the cost. God did something great in her life, and it was going to affect everything in her life. She was about to be married to Joseph. I want to make this clear. Marriage in this time was extremely important, especially for a woman. In fact, they would treasure their virginity so much so because if you were caught not to be a virgin, you could be put to death in this society. And here she is with a call from the Lord, and now she's going to probably be rejected by the person who's going to marry her. I'm walking around this room talking to each one of you guys about having endurance in your walk with the Lord, having endurance in your calling. Listen, if you think your calling is not going to cost you anything, or better yet, you don't want to pay a price for it, then when the time comes, you're not going to have any endurance to walk it out. Mary had to pay a big price. Joseph, I'm pregnant. What do you, you're pregnant? What do you, I, I'm still a virgin. Well, get out of here with that junk. You're still, pre, you're, you're still a virgin? No, 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 I don't think so. I want you to imagine for a second that society now I want you to imagine the pressure Mary had to have. Her calling was against everything in her life. And I want to say this about you and I. God's calling in your life will go against everything in your flesh. Everything in your flesh. There's not one calling that God will give to you that will fulfill the desires of your flesh. Not one. He does not call his people to fulfill the desires of his flesh. He calls his people to their purpose, which is the glorifying of him. And it will cost you your flesh. Mary was going to get married, and she had to pay a price. And this is the beautiful thing, though, because I want to tell you guys this really quick. Whatever your calling is, whatever God's calling you to, whatever that purpose is, you're going to have to pay a great price. Can I just tell you something? Do you know God is the best at paying the price for you? Did you know that? Let me tell you what happens right after this, when she was going to be put away secretly. It says, but while he thought about these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. What's cool about this is that Mary was going to be fully rejected. She was going to be an outcast. This story was going to be Mary, the virgin, got pregnant and ended up being single for the rest of her life and known as an adulterer, while the whole time she was a, a virgin from the Holy Spirit got impregnated. But the Lord says, I will cover you. You just trust me. Mary was willing to pay the price and trust in God. I want to say this about your endurance. Whatever your New Year's resolution is going to be, whatever your calling is, if there's not a price to it, then don't think that you're going to value it. God's going to ask you to pay a price. If you're not willing to pay it, don't bother. I want to say this back to my mom because I've already used it as an example. The price of trusting the Lord with her womb was to go through labor 11 times. And it didn't end there. Oh, where my mom's at. How many of you guys know the suffering continues in children bearing, don't you? There was a price that she was willing to pay. But because of it, she endured to the end. Look at my little brother, Micah. He's the best looking guy in the whole family. And she was rewarded even. Isn't that great? Did you just clap for yourself? Oh, I thought you were clapping for yourself. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Now I got one more that I want to end this service. Is that cool with you guys? But I'm going to announce something at the end. The last thing that Mary did before she had to endure, first thing was she surrounded herself with people filled with the Holy Spirit. Second thing was that she was willing to pay a price. And the third thing that happened, and this is maybe the most important one, is found in Luke chapter 2. Let me just tell you what happened. All these shepherds are notified, hey, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, is being born in your fields right now. And he's being laid in a manger, wrapped in swaddling cloth. I want you to go check it out. 
And these shepherds who, by the way, I just learned this and I love this. This is the most amazing thing. These shepherds had one job. They raised sacrificial lambs. That's what their job was in Bethlehem. Go look it up. It's pretty cool. Go do your own Bible study. And these shepherds came and they look in the manger and they see Jesus and they're blown away. And the scripture says when they left, they went and told everybody about these things. You guys, you guys, while we're laying these lambs in these mangers so the priest could examine them, there was a baby, a human who was born. His name is Emmanuel, Jesus. And they put him in a manger and he's the sacrificial lamb. God's lamb is here. But it says that Mary in this verse right here, Luke 2, 19, but it says, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. How many of you guys have had a crazy time with the Lord? Anyone ever have that before? How many of you ever had a crazy worship experience? Who's had a, you got to raise your hand. No nods at me, all right? Yeah, I can't see nods. There you go. You guys have had crazy times with the Lord, right? Man, I remember one time, y'all, I want to tell you this story because it's been a long time since this has happened. I was watching 722. Anyone here remember 722? Louis Gigolo back at Andy Stanley's church? Yeah, that was the, am I the only one old enough around here? Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm at, at watching it online, and they're singing some songs on the guitar. Uh, light of the world, light of, oh, I can't sing it, but it was Light of the World. It was a great song. And they're singing this song, and I remember I had that song on repeat for four hours. I was in the, what we call the gray house. It's an old crack house where we used to have the offices. I lived there in a little, it was a terrible story. And I was in there for four hours just crying out to the Lord, God, you are the light of the world. I went through that whole house. I was praying over it. I went and found, I, couldn't, I didn't have olive oil, so I used vegetable oil. And I just anointed the whole house, probably left stains on the wall. And I couldn't stop for four hours, man. And I remember at four hours looking at my watch thinking, I can't believe it's been four hours. I thought it was like 25 minutes. I listened to that song over and over. I had a moment with the Lord. Anyone ever have a moment like that where it just you got rocked? And then I went on those few weeks. I remember pondering on that thing, but then I forgot about that moment. And I forgot about all my moments with the Lord. I got so caught up and everything else in life. I just did something bad, Eli. I stepped on some cable. I fixed it, Eli. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I stopped pondering. Know what it means to ponder? It means to sit on it. It actually means to converse even. But it says that she conversed within her heart, which means that she kept talking about it in her head. You guys ever been bothered by something so much you can't stop thinking about it? That's what pondering is. You just keep thinking about it. You can't shake it. It says Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Pondered also means to wrestle with. Heart, by the way, doesn't mean that she, you know, wrote them down and stuck them into her skin and stick them into her heart. Heart means it was the central part of her physical and spiritual means. Everything about her was focused, kind of like the stage is set up right now. Everything towards the center, the heart. She put what God had done, and God had said to her, and what God had called her to, and she put it into the center of her life and said, this is everything. She pondered it. She wrestled with it. She meditated on it. She wouldn't let it go. Because I don't know about you, but if you don't keep something in the forefront of your mind, if you're like me, you start making mistakes. Great example, my dad. Dad, I use mom for all these great examples. I'm going to use you for a sad example. One time they left me at church. Can you believe that? I was 10 years old. I was asleep in the front pew. <laughs> it's my fault. It wasn't my dad's fault. And at church, I'm going to use myself as an example. At church, my wife is keen of taking care of my kids because I'm preaching to you guys. I'm talking to you guys. And I oftentimes keep my children not in the forefront, but they're the second in my life at church. And it's something I have to wrestle a lot because I have a calling to be your pastor, but I also have a calling to be their father. And so I have to wrestle these callings. And many times, if I don't have the forefront of my mind reminding myself about my kids, I will leave my kids' places. I'll jump in the car with Susie, and I'll, I'll take off driving before I even look in the back seats to see who's back there. Because if I'm not pondering on what my kids are doing, then it slips my mind. I want to say this about your calling, you enduring through the middle part. you got to keep your mind on it. you got to ponder it. Listen, when it comes to working out, one more example before I land this thing, because I'm about to land here. One more thing i got to talk to you. When it comes to working out, if working out is just an afterthought, then I won't do it. I'll forget about it. I'll wake up in the morning and think, what am I going to have for breakfast? I have to 
ponder on it. I got to sit on it. I'm going to say this about you. With your New Year's resolution, you got to ponder on it. But greater than that, with your call with the Lord, you have to wrestle with it, converse with it in your head. God, is this what you call me to do? Then I'm going to just talk about it in my head. I'm going to wrestle with you in my head. I'm going to meditate it with you, Jesus. Because Mary surrounded herself with people who were filled with the Holy Spirit, we know about that because when she was, her son was 12 years old, she was with people who were filled with Jesus. Because she was surrounded, because she paid a price, and because she would ponder these things, Mary got to see Jesus all the way to his death. In fact, on the cross, this is a different sermon, I'll preach this another time. At the cross, Jesus even gives her some honor. James, see that woman right there? I want you to take care of her. From now on, she's yours. And from that day, it says that he took care of her from that point on as if she was her, his mother. But Mary endured until the end. And I want to give you some encouragement. I want you to endure till the end. Your start, people were there for it. It's exciting. It's celebratory. When you finally accomplish what the Lord's done, believe me, there's going to be a celebration in heaven. But you're in the middle part right now. And some of us in this room have stopped surrounding ourselves with people filled with the Holy Spirit, and we've been discouraged from what we're supposed to be doing. We got so surrounded by videos and TV telling us how to make more money and how to be successful that we've lost our direction. Some of us haven't even been willing to pay the price. It's too great of a price. So the calling of the Lord doesn't have any value to you. And you've let it go. It's not that big of a deal. The Lord will forgive me. He will fix it. And some of us stopped pondering on the things that God's done in our life. And we've lost endurance. I want to encourage you today. Don't lose your endurance. You've started something great in your life. You started something great in your life. You have amazing things going on in your life. Don't slow down. There is a reward at the end. The race isn't finished, though. You have more to go. You have greater things. Can I say that to you? I want to look at my dad and Miss Dorothy. Where's Miss Dorothy? Miss Dorothy, right now, you're the elder of this church when it comes to age. But you have greater things that God has in store for you. Greater things than even before. So don't give up. Go back and surround yourself with spirit-filled people. Ponder on what God's told you. Say, I will pay any price. My race isn't over. I don't want to lose the endurance. I want to see this thing till the end. So I'm looking around this room. It's about to be New Year's this Saturday, the start of 2022. And everyone in this room, you're going to make a resolution like you're starting over. Can I make a resolution? I'm going to make two resolutions for you. The first resolution that I need you to make is saying, God, I am going to follow those three things. Surround myself with people who are filled with your Holy Spirit. I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to ponder on your things that you've done in my life. I'm going to wrestle them, converse them in my mind. That's the first resolution I want you to make. God, I'm going to endure this year. I'm going to endure my calling, my purpose, what you have for me. I'm not going to let it slip away. It doesn't matter what's in front of me. I don't care how I feel. I don't care how tired I am. I don't care how sick I am. I'm using sick because I think sometimes when I'm sick, nothing matters. I want to die. But it doesn't matter this time. If I'm sick, I'm saying, God, I'm going to set my mind upon you. I need you guys to make a resolution. I'm going to endure until I see the end. I'm going to push forward. I'm going to be in my scriptures. I'm going to know what God's called me to do until the very end. No matter what comes against me, I shall stand. It doesn't matter what weapon is formed against me. It's not going to prosper because I've set my mind on the things of Jesus. I've set my mind on what he's done in my life. I've surrounded myself with people filled with the Holy Spirit. I've paid the great price. I am set. There will be nothing against me that succeeds. Can you make that resolution? But there's one more resolution I want to make with you guys, and I want to do this one with you. This isn't the whole church, and we're going to be pushing this to the whole church, but I want to do something with you guys. I think it's important. Because I know I started with Bible reading with you guys about last year. I started 10 chapters a day. I was going to read the whole Bible in like two months or something like that. Three months. I don't know the math. It was some short time. But I'm actually looking around the room. I thought, man, you know what would be really, really cool? In fact, my wife brought this up back in October. As a church, 
I want to make a deal with you guys that together we read the Bible fully in the year 2022. And we'll start January 1st. And on the Church Center app, I'm going to put up a good Bible plan for you. It's going to be in the Bible app. If you don't have the Bible app, you could figure out what it is. We'll send you what the scriptures are. I'll put some reminders out for you guys. I will even preach on this year's reading through the Word. But church, can I do something with you and can I encourage you? It's going to be up on New Year's Eve. We're going to launch it. You'll, you'll, you will get the notifications. We'll make sure you know about it. I want to encourage you that you make a resolution this year to read the entire Bible with the rest of your church body. And every day, we won't skip it. Every day, we'll get in the Word of God together. And we're not going to have a Bible study, but spiritually, we're going to be on the same page. And when I get up here and I'll preach, and sometimes I'll preach right out of those words, you'll be saying, I just read that scripture. And you know what will happen? This is the thing that will give you endurance. You ponder His Word, knowing Him. So those are your two resolutions. When Saturday comes, that Friday night when you're celebrating, you're kissing your loved ones, you're sleeping like I will be. That Saturday, 12 a.m., and you'll say, I'm going to endure this year. I'm going to read my Bible with the rest of my church. You guys down for that? Yeah, I'm down for that too. You guys excited about that? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Lisa's pumped. Me and Lisa, we'll be reading the Bible. Yeah. Hey, check this out. I'm going to pray a prayer, and then I'm going to release you guys. Oh, right on time. But this is going to be my prayer for you guys today, is that that endurance for your calling would be remembered. That your calling would be remembered. Actually, can I just say this really quick for a second to you guys? It's in my heart. Some of you guys heard the Lord say where he's going to take you. Some of you guys heard the Lord call you to something. I say call you to something, which means he's directed you to do something. But you lost your endurance. And you left it behind. And I don't know what that thing is. It might be the mission field. It might be ministering. It might be going to the workforce. I don't know what it is. I want to say this to you. It's not too late. You didn't lose out. He's redeemed everything, even time. I'm going to pray that today we find ourselves back in our calling. Amen. And I'm going to release you guys. Father, I pray over everyone in this room. Every single person. Now, Father, you, Jesus, would remind them of what you've already said to them, of that calling. God, some people have been called to be doing things that they're not doing right now because they weren't willing to pay the price because they forgot about it. They stopped pondering on it because they've surrounded themselves with people who are more interested in success in the world than the spirit of you, God. And God, I pray over everyone in this room, Jesus. That, Father, you would remind them, that you would encourage them, that you would show them again the great price. And that, Father, their callings would be established. Their direction of you, God, would be established in their hearts. And that, God, we would be able to endure whatever comes our way. So, Father, thank you. And, God, we pray a blessing over this church. God, I pray you anoint them. God, I pray that as they walk out of this place, God, they would be filled with joy and, and gladness, God. They would be blessed. And that, God, this week would be full of you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. We hope that you enjoyed today's sermon. Once again, if you'd like to support this ministry, log on to www.dreamcenterchurch.com to help us advance the kingdom of God. And check us out on the Church Center app and all your favorite social media platforms. Until next time, be blessed and go do the great things God has called you to do.